It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, July 21st, 2011. I am James Burns, your host, along with Adam, our network producer, man, the helm back at AFR HQ in Austin, Texas. I am coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana this afternoon, and a lot of headlines to go over today, a lot of topics to discuss with Bob Chapman. He is our guest this afternoon, like he is every Thursday afternoon, 3 o'clock central, right here on Freedom Files. Be sure and uh, subscribe to The International Forecaster at theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today, sir? Well, pretty good. Excellent. Another busy day. Oh, it's real busy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. I mean, the first thing we'll start off with is is, uh, the uh, debt ceiling situation. I was looking at an article um, earlier before the show, and it looks like that they're uh, one step closer towards uh, raising the debt limit. So it looks like Boehner's going to uh, fold, which is no surprise there. So it looks like that's going to be the most likely scenario. But there are other scenarios as well, the possibility of an extension or uh, Obama used an executive order as, uh, you know, that genius Mitch McConnell suggested. Uh, what do you think all this is going to lead towards, Bob? Well, I, I, I don't believe that the cuts that are proposed will become much of reality, except perhaps the Social Security and Medicare, you know, it's screw the old people. And uh, the uh, tax breaks for the rich will continue. Uh, 100% of nothing. It's just a political theater, everybody trying who's in office to make um, inroads for themselves for the next election. It's really a national disgrace. Yeah, I mean, to say the least, I mean, I read an article last night that 80% of Americans right now are angry at the government, and I think this is yet another prime example of why people are so upset. Well, I said prior to the last election, you know, what are you people going to learn? Get rid of them all. No one was listening. They they did make uh, 83 changes, I think it was. But it wasn't nearly enough. We got a clean house because they're all bought and paid for. That's what the problem is. We have a corporate fascist government. And it's as simple as that. And they're going to continue to do what Wall Street banking, et cetera, wants because they're paying them. You and I as constituents are not paying them. If you don't pay them, you don't get any action. It's pretty simple. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that, Bob. I mean, they no longer uh, listen to we the people. It's all about who fills their campaign war chests and pays them off. That's right. And that's what we degenerated to. It always reminds me of uh, the last 200 years in Rome, uh, from 150 to 350 uh, A.D., uh, that the army went to the highest bidder. You know, how much do you want to pay? And whoever had the most money became dictator. And there was no longer a free democratic Roman state hadn't been for a long time. And uh, so you're not going to see any changes until we change the rules. And the rules are controlled by the people who are controlled, if you can follow that. And so it's just going to continue to degenerate until people start demonstrating. And if they demonstrate all over the country, then the goons who have been federalized We'll go in and start shooting people, and then you'll have a revolution. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly where we're heading, Bob, because, I mean, look at the past track record. I mean, over the past couple of years alone, I mean, 2008, the banker bailouts, you know, nine out of ten Americans were against it. They called, they faxed, they wrote their Congress critters. It still got passed. I mean, we were against Obamacare. We were against the Patriot Act extensions a few months ago, but, you know, some of those, quote-unquote, Tea Party candidates that got elected back in November – they were the ones who were voting in favor of the extensions. That's right. And so, you know, the 
proof of the pill pudding is in the tasting, and the tasting is we're not getting our citizenship worth, and we're never going to get it under the present rules. And so you you know you better hitch up your britches because we know it's coming. I got a tape today from uh, someone who was in the military, and it'll be in Saturday's issue under U.S. I also sent it over to Drew Rains at uh, the Marine Disquisition, which is a program I do after yours. And what they're doing to people who have served and are honorably discharged, they're calling them back. And this is all services. So that tells me they're getting ready for another war of some kind. That's what's going on. Uh, most of that information is not known, and because uh, I've checked other sources and nobody knows anything about it. I have a tape in there by the individual who they attempted to call up, and he says, I won't go. I'm not going to go murder people who have done nothing. And he's probably referring to Libya. And... Um, Although you might have said that, I don't know. But this, this is what goes on all the time. It's nothing new. They don't care. They do what they want. Yeah, I mean, it, it could go for anything now. It could go for Libya. It could go for you know, the CIA drones bombing Pakistan or for what's transpired in Afghanistan or Iraq. I mean, most of these people are innocent, and they've never done anything to us. Yet we, we seem to have this reason, this desire to go uh, fight terrorism and uh, bring liberty to people. I mean, I guess we brought liberty to, what, over a 1,000 people in uh, Libya so far. And that is a big concern about what's going on with these uh, troop recalls, because I've been hearing about that as well, Bob. And I see three likely scenarios in this. Either they're gearing up for a possible uh, ground war in Libya, even though it looks like the coalition is falling apart. And there's also scuttlebutt of a possible uh, conflict with Iran. Or those troops could be getting ready for something uh, a little bit more local. Well... If it's local, government is going to find out really quickly that it's not going to work. American soldiers, Marines, Naval and Air Force per personnel are not going to kill their own people. They're just not going to do it. And there's studies to show that perhaps 10 to 15 percent would opt out, but if they try that, the others will kill them. So, you know, if these pointy-headed uh, masters of the universe at the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg and Bilderbergers and the Royal Society, the Illuminati, if they think they're going to get away with it, that crazy. It isn't going to happen. They don't control anything when it comes to the military. And probably the first people shot will be the people in the Pentagon. Is nothing but a bunch of crooks, and always have been. I met more officers who made colonel. They said, I get out. I, I couldn't handle it. The corruption is so bad. That's sad, because most people that go into the military, you know, go in with noble intentions. You know, they, they start thinking about, you know, honor and serving their country, and then they get to a point like that where they, they get, you know, kind of like a, a reality shock, and then they see how... Uh, lack, how much lack of honor there actually is in such an organization as the uh, Pentagram, I mean the Pentagon. <laughs> Freudian? Yeah, but you're right, Bob. Is that a Freudian slip? Yeah, yeah, just maybe, maybe a little intentionally. It's something I like to do. Bob Chapman's my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, and Bob, I mean, surely this has got to be getting on, you know, the soldier's last nerve you know the fact that we're occupying all these countries and the corruption that's not only in the government but within the military itself i mean i mean what what kind of i mean because you go on several military shows and you talk to people in the military what kind of effect of, is all this having on them it's not helping um you know they know their jobs and um they certainly didn't bargain for the kind of deployment that they're being given. First Iraq and then Afghanistan. 
and now when we're talking about Libya, um, they, they're very disappointed. A lot of them are leaving the service, um, especially the people who signed up for four or six years, and uh, they decided, you know, that's not what I came here for. I came here to defend my country. And uh, this has nothing to do with defending America, whether it's overseas or at home. It's got everything to do with enriching the military-industrial complex. That's really what it's about. And, of course, having wars to cover the financial and economic problems that have been deliberately caused by these people. They want world government, and they don't care what they have to do to get it. Well, I won't care either after they've been tried and I pull the lever and the news tightens around their neck and their neck snaps. <laughs> Are you going to be like one of those old-fashioned executioners that uh, wore a mask? Are you just going to sit there with a big grill on your face with, a, with like one of those stickers that says, Hello, my name is Bob. <laughs> well... First of all, I would never wear a hood. And second of all, uh, I would never chastise another human being. It's not my place to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else will do that for them. And so with that said, I'll just do what I have to do because of what these people have done to our nation and, and other people in other countries as well. These people are really, really evil. And, you know, the public can't understand this. They, they don't know. They've never encountered anything as evil and diabolical as this. So they, they, their, their humanity can't grasp the evil mind. It's just like people who are in prison who have done all sorts of heinous acts. People look at them and say, well, gee, uh, he doesn't look like such a bad sort. No, you know, ladies and gentlemen, he is. He was a menace to society. Well, that's what we got in Wall Street, in banking, in Washington, the transnational corporations. It's incredible what they get away with. Yeah, I mean, it's just sad. I mean, <clears throat> I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and we were having this discussion about why, why the powers that be want to do this stuff to us why are they willing to go to you know bring us through a, a third world war and institute a world government and depopulate the planet and he was you know he, he just couldn't you know at, he couldn't fathom why they would do it and i'm like it's very simple these people are, come from generations of you know families that have always saw themselves as holier than thou they think their fecal matter smells like roses and they look down upon us like we're bugs to be squashed and they also innumerable times have come out and said 60% of the people in the world shouldn't be here. Or 70%. Uh, we had Ted Turner give us 90% last week on CNN. I mean, these people are deranged. And they create situations where the food supply goes up in cost, and then people in different parts of the world starve to death. They think that's good. Yeah, I mean, I I came across this article yesterday how because of the uh, the heat conditions across the U.S. and with this drought going on, uh, you know, auctioneers at cattle uh, are uh, selling them in surplus right now more than they're used to on a regular basis, uh, countless heads of cattle. And at the moment, it's going to cause uh, beef prices to go down. But in the long run, it's going to, you know, cause beef prices to skyrocket because there's going to be less uh, cows out there. And it takes at least a year for a calf to mature to becoming a full-grown cow or bull. And that's going to cause problems down the road for us all. Well, that's sure. You're right. And, uh, you know, we keep on having bad weather. You often wonder whether it's being done deliberately. I see... Today, you know, it's winter in South America. And they had six feet of snow near Tierra del Fuego. 
for those of you who don't know where that is, it's at the tip of the end of Chile and Argentina, and not too far from the South Pole. And they normally don't have that kind of snowfall. I suppose those things can happen, but, you know, you often wonder, is a government experimenting or some government? Now, I've become very suspicious of that, Bob. I mean, you see what's been happening the past couple of months alone. I mean, at the end of the year of 2010, you had these massive fish and bird die-offs all over the world, and you've had these massive earthquakes. You've had so many different weather anomalies happening. And a lot of people are talking about weather weapons. They're talking about scalar weapons. They're talking about HARP. And I think there's something to it. Well, you know, <clears throat> they started uh, using weather control uh, back in the mid-1950s. And it was a project I knew an awful lot about when I was in counterintelligence <clears throat> because it, it affected us. And uh, the Russians started at about the same time. And uh, who knows what they can do? Uh, we all know that there's a thing called HARP. Has it been perfected to the point where they can do just about anything they'd like to? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's one of the mysteries out there. A lot of the uh, secrets that they like to keep under wraps. But fortunately, there are plenty of whistleblowers out there that blow the lid on things. And I think as time progresses, thanks to the alternative media, such as yourself, Bob Chapman, and others, we're finding out more and more about what's really going on. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. More of him coming up right after this. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, July 21st, 2011. James Burns along with Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And shifting gears to uh, what's going on in Europe. I mean, we have a problem over here in the U.S. with a potential economic collapse, but it looks like, Bob, in the EU, uh, they're under uh, some serious strains right now. Uh, you had French, French President Sarkozy meeting with uh, German Chancellor Merkel in fear of a financial collapse, they're saying that could be worse than uh, 1929. And what do you think, I mean, we've talked about this several times on the show, Bob. How close do you think the EU is from going under? I think that uh, this probably is going to be an ongoing situation for the next two years, uh, if we have a war especially. And uh, I think... As a result of that, they'll blame everything on the wars. And uh, the next thing that they'll do is they will have a big meeting, devalue, revalue, and default. And I, I think that's within a couple of years. It, it could be closer. The situation in Europe right now is really dreadful. I, I don't know how far they got today with their talks. I haven't seen anything new come out. And, uh, but anything that they do will be a short term palliative. And they don't want to have Greece or the other five countries go bankrupt. The main reason being the banks in Europe would go under, uh, the insurance, which are the CDS, the um, credit default swaps. They'll cost American banks who insured European banks $160 billion. And that will spread. There's no good end. There's nothing that can good come out of it. They may gain some time, but it's not going to be long. Uh, none of these nations can make payments. Uh, they are financially on their back. They uh, are cutting back. Salaries are back cut back 35, uh, 50%, and the, the litany goes on and on. It's terrible. And it's no way to try to get a recovery. Uh, if you want to destroy these countries, that's a good way to do it. So that's going to affect people all over the world. It's very important. You know, Americans think, well, gee, they get 
trouble over there in, in, in England and in Europe. It's not going to affect us. And of course it is. I mean, even people who are educated, they don't get it. It's just astounding. You know, they don't know how bad the situation is. Yeah, I mean, they don't. And I saw somebody, a friend of mine on Facebook, and uh, she's very smart. She's very savvy when it comes to gold and all that stuff. But she made some really smart-ass comment about Greece. She was talking about how, let me see if I can find her comment. I, I, want, I don't want to misquote her on this, but she was basically saying how Greece is being bailed out and uh, how they uh, are basically a, a wet blanket or something. So, I mean, I think obviously <laughs> she doesn't seem to understand. Uh, yeah, she said this, okay, Europe decided to bail out Greece again. Wow, they are retarded. Greece is like a baby with a wet diaper. What is your comments about that, Bob? Well... I think, in part, the Greek people, who are very liberal overall, uh, they knew what was going on to an extent. And, you know, their style of life, uh, their culture, is not in tune with others in the 20th century, now the 21st century. And... um, they just simply can't compete. And there's other countries like that as well. And what is going to be the outcome? Um, no matter what they do, they're going to have a terrible problem. But austerity and and uh, cutting salaries 50%, it doesn't work. I mean, what they should do, and I said this long, long ago, is default in their debt and go back to the drachma and set up a plan for five or more years, 20% a year if it's five years, of cutting back salaries, etc. Things that government does. And that's a way to do it. There's no good solution. And the banks in Europe are going to go under. Well, they should have thought about that when they were leveraged 70 to 1. And I just saw a report today on the money that was given by the Federal Reserve to the banks in Europe. I had tagged it at $13.8 trillion. Nobody wanted to agree with me. Now the report says $15 trillion. So there's no end to this. And these people are going to play games as long as they can. And that's why you can't be in any currency except a function. I mean, you can't expand your business and hope to get the return back for the investment that you've made. Government is becoming more punitive everywhere. And it's affecting business. And so until we have a purging of the system and those who should be bankrupt that are too big to fail, should be allowed to go bankrupt. Sure, people are going to lose a lot of money. Should have thought about that. Should have informed yourself. Should have listened to this program or others like it. Should have gone on the Internet and find out what people are talking about. You know, the people under 50 years old get a fairly good idea of what's going on. People over 50... They're wandering around in a cloud. They just can't believe what they see happening. And when you give an explanation, they say, no, I can't. I can't believe that the government would do that. Good. Starve. Because they're going to cut your Social Security and your Medicare. So you'll die sooner. That's what it's all about. So if you want to get dead, go right along with the program and don't listen. I mean, that's why people are leaving the country. It's oppression. We used to talk about oppression during the years of the Soviet running Russia, particularly after the war. America has oppression. Look at all the policing agencies they've got. They get so many they can't even list the names. 
We have people at airports who are doing all sorts of terrible things. Children, men, women. It's awful. In fact, Jeff, Jeff, Jesse Ventura is going to be on tomorrow with Alex Jones. I'll be on that program, but not with him, I don't think, because they haven't informed me they want us on together. And Jesse said, if I don't have my day in court, I'm out of here. No, no one is more tried red, white, and blue American than he, and for that matter, myself. And I had to get out of the country because they threatened me. Guys like Jesse, they don't threaten them. They just kill them. Yeah, I saw that uh, video that uh, Jones did a couple days ago regarding uh, his uh, meeting with uh, Jesse last week at a birthday party uh, for Jesse Ventura and another friend of his. And, yeah, I mean, from what Alex said on that video, it seems like Ventura has had enough. And what what uh, Jesse Ventura is feeling is, you know, the, I think the pulse of a lot of Americans right now, where we're fed up, we're sick and tired of the tyranny, we're sick and tired of the BS, we're sick and tired of the corruption, and despite... Those who fact, can leave, will leave. Yeah, those who can leave, will leave, just like you said. That's and like this will be an impetus. Off. They'll say, gee, you know, he's a stand-up guy, and he did this, that, and the other thing, yeah. which was good for America, and he said, I can't take anymore. Well, I can't either. I'm leaving. But it's not easy to leave. If you're a retiree, it's easy. But most countries will not allow foreigners to work in their countries. So what you've got to do is bring money and invest in business, either a new one or an existing one. Then you can get a work permit. Work permits are very, very difficult to get. I know I had two of them back in um, the late 50s in other countries, and they were very, very difficult to get. And um, so I think that's going to happen. There won't be any mass exodus. Most people can't afford to leave. And if you can't get a job in country X, you can't do that. go there because you can't feed yourself. Now, Jesse, he'll still do television, but, uh, but he doesn't have to. I'm sure he's got enough money that he can retire. And Baja is a nice place. I've been there probably 500 times. Uh, living in Los Angeles, I goes to uh, I go to Cabo and Ensenada to fish uh, during the uh, albacore season, and so I know all those little towns, La Paz, and so on and so forth. It's a nice place to live. Very rustic, not a lot to do. I mean, there's other cities in. Mexico that uh, would prove to be more exciting if that's what you wanted. It's just amazing, though, that despite the fact that Mexico itself has been having some problems, especially with the drug war and these, the cartels fighting each other and killing people left and right, uh, there are still some good spots in Mexico, like the Baja area and others, that you know are way better off than <laughs> the tyranny that we're facing here in the States. Well, there's only certain sections, and uh, the House and the Senate in Mexico are run by PRI, P-R-I, the old dinosaur party, and they're getting stronger again. They just had the governorship uh, race in Mexico City, and uh, their candidate ran away with it. Um, as soon as there's a new presidency, which will be a year from this November, all of this problem with the Nacotapacantes will be over. My sources tell me they've already made a deal with them. And the approach that was used by the current administration was the wrong one. Look, if Americans are going to use drugs that come from or through Mexico, they're going to do it. The Mexican government looks at it this way. They make $45 billion a year on oil. They make $30 billion a year on narcotics. The money that comes in from other countries, particularly the United States, for legal and illegal aliens, sending money home to the family, is about $22 billion a year. 
tourism is $17 billion. Now, they're not very anxious in Mexico to get rid of $30 billion. And so what they'll do is say, okay, you guys can function. If those guys up there in America want to buy all those drugs, it's okay. Let them do what they want. But you can't kill each other. No kidnapping. None of this crap's going to go on anymore. And you just do what you have to do. And that's what's going to happen. I know the Latin mentality. And Calderon made a terrible mistake. And that's why his party will not be reelected to the presidency. And they will even lose even more seats in the Senate and the Assembly. I mean, it's, it's kind of surreal to see some actual potential positive change happening in Mexico coming up uh, with their presidential election in 2012. But on the flip side, Bob, it's, it's really heartbreaking to realize that, I mean, unless by some miracle Ron Paul garners up enough support, and it's possible he will, but chances are at the same time, it looks like it's going to either be Obama reelected or one of these uh, establishment neocons in the White House. And if that happens, it's just going to be more of the same. You're right. And that'll be the last straw. And uh, so we're a year and a half away. And if they will call, say, vote in the wrong people, the game's over. There's only a question, how long will it take to have the revolution. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I you feel know, I'm that, sorry to have to get on the air and tell people this, but that's what I think. You know, I look at the history. I look at what's going on, not only here, but throughout the world. I mean, look at the unemployment and demonstrations and police brutality. It's terrible. In places like Spain... It wasn't so bad in in, um, <coughs> in Greece <coughs> and in Ireland. And yeah. uh, hold they that had thought, some terrible Bob, violence a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, hold that thought, Bob. We're going to break. Uh, we'll uh, wrap it up on the other side. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. You're listening to Freedom Files on AFR. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is July 21st, 2011. James Burns, along with Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And before the break, Bob, we were talking about the possibility of a revolution coming to the United States. I, I fear it's inevitable. I mean, you have it not just happening here, but you have these massive protests going on throughout the world, Greece, Europe, the Middle East. And I really do feel my bones, Bob, that this 2012 presidential race is our last chance to turn things around peacefully. Well, I think you're right. And were uh, Ron Paul to be elected, then I, I think we have a shot at making changes. Um, we'll just have to see. You know, I try, always try to look at the objective, bright side of things, but it's, it's difficult very often. But uh, in over 22 years of publishing, and this is my second vocation. I spent 29 years as a stockbroker and owner of a stockbroker firm. And um, you, you, we have to look at things realistically, and when you do and you've got the background, you come out being right 98% of the time. And, um, and that's no unusual occurrence. There are other people like me around. Unfortunately, there's not enough, enough of them. And uh, so we got to try to hope for the best and do what we can to make changes. But uh, it's a long shot. Simple as that. It most definitely is. And I think that we're really running out of time, Bob, and all this whole thing. I mean, you have uh, gold uh, and silver. They're going back up along with oil. And we talked about food prices earlier today, and the housing market's continuing to um, sink further and further down in the hole. I mean, things economically are really starting to unravel at an alarming rate. 
Well, I think it's, um, yes, they are unraveling. But um, we were told we were going to have and were having a recovery. And uh, that really wasn't so. I mean, unemployment has gone up, not down, or back up to what it was before. And the only people who are prospering are the wealthy and uh, those on Wall Street and in banking and the transnational corporations that hide their profits offshore and don't pay any taxes legally. I mean, you know, what kind of a place do we live in? We lost 11.7 million jobs to free trade globalization, offshoring and outsourcing. And nobody talks about it. Congress could care less because the transnational corporations are giving them money to get reelected. That's why. They don't care if we move everything out of the country. And I don't know what their design on the future is. The the understanding that we can't keep on doing that kind of thing. 440,000 businesses left the country in 11 years. Mm, there were some between 1980 and 2000 as well. But I don't have a handle on those numbers. And it's just not good. And there's no improvement. No one in Congress talks about tariffs on goods and services because the people who pay them have transnational corporations that are invested in them. The whole thing is incestuous. Right now, those corporations have more than $2 trillion offshore, tax-free. And again, they want to bring it back, not a 35% taxation, but 5 and a quarter percent like they did before. That's an insult to the American people. I mean, the better way to do it would be to change the law and say, bring it back. If you don't bring it back, we'll go get it. Yeah, I mean, and that's the problem. I mean, we've had so many different ridiculous <laughs> laws passed. I mean, like NAFTA, uh, GATT, CAFTA, and, you know, that's been part, you know, definitely part of the problem there. And, these people in Congress, they're not listening to us. They, they stopped listening a long time ago, and they don't seem to recognize the fact that uh, while they seem to have short-term memory, we have long-term memory. While you can have somebody like Newt Gingrich, whose uh, campaign is currently a million dollars in the hole, he's going around accusing the Democrats of being the food stamp party. It was his own uh, backing of NAFTA that helped get us in this situation. And that's true. They're all in on it together. There's exceptions, but most all of them are. It's for enrichment, adaptation, egoism. That's what it's all about. That's all they care about. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the sad reality. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. A uh, file thing I'd like to get into this afternoon is uh, Rupert Murdoch's uh, phone hacking scandal circus. Do you think this whole thing going on in the U.K., which obviously affects us because News, News Corp owns, uh, what, 20th Century Fox, uh, Fox News, a couple other companies, do you think it's all just one big giant distraction, or do you think that there might be something more to this? It's not a distraction. They get caught with their pants down. And this thing has been hushed up for two years. And recently, the two guys that blew the whistle, they died. And nobody knows why. And Scotland Yard won't release the cause of death. I mean, what, what kind of a country is that? It's as bad as the United States. Of course they were murdered. What, what was uh, he doing in his company? They were working with the CIA... MI5, Scotland Yard, and the Mossad collecting data on people. That's what they were doing. And what you saw in court two days ago, the hearing, it was a whitewash. It was an insult to anybody who's got any intelligence. The lay down. Yeah, I mean, that. It. it's just sad that, you know, it, I mean, yeah, I'm glad that they're, they're, they're finally 
shining the light on what's been uh, going on behind News Corp, News International, uh, the entire uh, you know R- Rupert Murdoch's media empire. But the sad reality, Bob, is you and I both know this. The rest of the mainstream media does this as well, along with governments. That's right. The corruption is endemic in many societies. And two of them, the United States and England. Yeah, it's very true. And that, that's what I find so, it's, it's not funny, but it's uh, hypocritical. Well, they'll, they'll go after News Corp and News International, but at the same time, they'll leave uh, the big giant corporations that own the rest of them alone. And they'll, they'll continue their phone hacking uh, against we the people when they're you know they're monitoring our phone calls our text messages uh, and all that jazz but that's okay that's right and they own the court systems i mean i i had a book uh maybe 25 years ago it, it explained the masonic control of the entire police establishment in the united kingdom it was incredible. And you don't get a job unless you're one of them. And then you have to toe the line and do what you're told. So this is an old tradition. But Americans don't know that. And probably most Brits don't know that either. They don't delve into the things that I do. I like books to tell about people who shouldn't be doing what they're doing. Yeah, and what, what's sad, Bob, is most people care more about uh, football, soccer, and reality shows than about what's really going on in the world. we got about a minute left, Bob. Uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? They can just wave their magic wand, and it will be right on their computer. <laughs> Hardly. But anyway, the uh, international forecast is about business, finance, economics, social and political issues all over the world, published by email Wednesdays and Saturdays, runs around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. Everything that you need to know every week is in that publication. You get a free introductory copy by going to the internationalforecaster.com the international f-o-r-e c-a-s-t-e-r dot com or you can go to www.int forecaster.com int forecaster.com for those of you who have questions and we answer everyone you can get a free copy of either and you can get a copy of our latest report on gold and silver shares. And that address is bob at intforecaster.com. Bob at intforecaster.com. All right, Bob. Well, I guess we're out of time. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show this afternoon, and I will talk to you next week. I will be here. Take care, Bob. And thank you all for listening.